So visibility is going to be a huge problem here, okay? Maintain lane position. All right? We're driving through a tunnel. Stay in the same position. Don't change lanes. Lanes may appear smaller, but they're the same size. It's an optical illusion, all right? Turn on your lights and take off your sunglasses because of limited light, it's important to see and be seen. Again, all, all boils down to visibility. Make sure your vehicle has gas, is in a working order. A vehicle malfunction can cause the entire tunnel to come to a stop and create major backups. Make sure your electronics are off and your seatbelts are on. This seems like it's gonna be routine, but it's not, okay? If you live anywhere around like New York City, um, Chicago, Boston, there's a lot of tunnels and, and, and bridges, people run out of gas all the time. And it causes a six hour, eight hour delay for the rest of the day. Because the one car ran out of gas. That, so that's that's real right there, okay? So you got to make sure, hey, before I'm going to tunnel, let me make sure I got my, my, my fuel in my tank, all right? Um, Toll plazas, okay? There is a space issue. Notice the tunnel has not enough space. It's an optical illusion with not enough space. The toll plaza is the opposite problem. There's too much space, okay? You're going to go from two, three, four lanes. You can go... Uh, 10, 15, 20, 30 lanes wide at a, at a toll plaza, okay? So the traffic fans out, everybody's trying to get to pay their toll, and then they get right back in. And with Easy Pass, people just keep going at 50, whatever the speed limit is, 55, 25, 30, whatever they post, and then they keep it moving in those lanes. So people trying to find an Easy Pass lane uh, versus, uh, versus a uh, cash lane, Okay. So you have those things going on, and everybody's trying to manage their space. People will change lanes in the solid white line. They're not supposed to, but they can because they're not supposed to be in the easy pass lane. They got to pay the cash lane, or they got they got they get you know, easy pass, but they, they don't need to be the cash lane. They can go to the easy pass lane. So there's all this switching and space management that has to take place. There's an enormous amount of space. So you have tunnels, limited no space, toll plazas, a whole bunch of space. All right. Bridges, visibility issue. You're going on a bridge, you're going up and then down. So your car, and it depends on steep, like the Harry Nice, is a steep bridge. You go up, up, you can't see all you get a crest, boom, you're going down. Okay? So you have to make sure you can see around, be aware, and see around yourself. All right? Uh, crowded, the visibility, there's no shoulder. Okay? The vehicle crashes or a mechanical issue. All right? Only place you're going is overboard. Okay? So... You got to make sure you, you see what's going on, all right? Bridge is safe and legal. Notice this picture. The light and the markings tell the whole story of what's allowed here. The double yellow line allows you to go and pass back and forth. But because there's a green arrow, there's a red X that faces this way. This lane, everybody's going up. So it's two-way traffic on this span of the bridge. Now, this double yellow line becomes a solid yellow line a double solid yellow line based on the light. So there are situations where you're going to have your light and your markings complete the whole picture of what you're allowed to do. And you have to recognize that. What was the double yellow line to pass? No, it's not a light. Light told you that the lane was blocked, so it becomes a double yellow line. You can only go from your what? Your middle lane to your what? right lane, your right lane to your middle lane. You got two lanes to, to function in, all right? So this is what I'm saying, complete picture, all right? You got to see the complete picture. All right. Now, legal speed, you got 55, all right? 65, whatever posted limit is never drive faster than the road conditions allow, okay? 70, no matter how fast or slow, you need to have your seatbelt on, your electronics off, okay? The faster you go, the more tension, the more tension it, your, your driving deserves, okay? Remember, at what, uh, 65 miles an hour, you're traveling at 95 feet per second, okay? So you blink, and all of a sudden, you just you just went 100 feet. You look down and look up, you just went 300 feet. That's at 65 miles an hour. Any faster than that, it's going to look like a burp, okay? Law enforcement does not stop a driver until he or she is going 10 miles over the speed limit. True or false? Um, and, and every interstate has a speed lane where you can go faster than the supposed speed limit. 
Speed limits are limits that you obey regardless of weather or road conditions. Higher speeds give a driver less time to make adjustments to other drivers in road conditions. Higher speeds contribute to more severe crashes and more severe injuries. Okay? So, fact or fiction. First one, true or false? Where are we going? Up or down? Everybody going up? Down? What? All right. We got a thumb there. False. Okay? Remember, one mile over. Every interstate has a speed lane. We can go faster. True or false? Fact or fiction? False. I got a thumb. That's false. The left lane is not a speed lane. It is a passing lane. First of all, that's why cops get there and they tailgate you. You're not supposed to be in that lane traveling. You're supposed to get by and get out. Get in and get out. All right? Speed limits are limits you obey regardless of weather or road conditions. Fact or fiction? Imani, what do you say? There you go. Imani got it. All right? False. Think about it. Anytime it's a variable, what's the first thing you do? Adjust. Reduce speed. There you go. So weather is a variable. I'm slowing down. I'm not speeding up. I'm not maintaining, I'm not maintaining my speed. Higher speeds give a driver less time to make adjustments. That's true. Okay? Just talked about it up top. And higher speeds contribute to more severe crashes or more severe injuries. That is true. They exemplify whatever's about to happen. They make it worse. Okay? I, you know, they say speed kills. I tell people speed doesn't kill. It speeds exemplifies the, the problem, problem of the driver not knowing what they're doing. Now, see, it's going to run away way to do it, but if speed kills, race car drives will be dead. Think about it. Speeding. See? Right there. Each one of these right here is a fatality. Mother Nature wins in the long run. Fatality. That's a minivan. Okay? Minivan crushed to a, a Civic. Okay? So, changing lanes on the expressway. Why? When well, you're entering and exiting the highway. You're allowing another driver to enter. You're following large trucks. You can't see. Visibility issue. Lane ahead becomes blocked. Visibility issue. Space, space management. Passing. You need... Man, man, it's time and space. Okay? See? All reasons why you're going to change lanes. Okay? So, changing lanes on the expressway. How? Well, remember to see. Search, value, execute. First thing I do is get information. Look around. Find a gap of traffic in the lane where you want to go. Activate your turn signal. Check traffic one lane over. Uh, make sure no other car is trying to move into the same spot. Use your mirror to ensure that the blind spot is clear. Carefully move into the new lane. Turn off your signal, all right? So this is the process right here. Now, changing lanes. Again, here's your acceleration lane right here. <clears throat> here's your median. You got cars all around here. These two are side by side. I don't want to enter this space. This is a problem, so there's no options. Limited options here. So you got the Volvo here. Now, the next question that I have is, well, if you're here, you want to change lanes, how would you do it? I wouldn't do it. I'm managing time and space. There's not a gap. They're side by side. He's got traffic in front of him. This is just not a good scenario. I stay put, let things ease out. I go behind the Volvo. Okay? And, and that's, how you, that's how you have to think. All right? See, I'm right next to that Volvo. I'm not changing. Nah. I refuse to. Now, in this picture, what is the risk and danger? What's the variable that, that, that makes it so that, um, okay, what side of the road can you can you pass on safely? So if you're going to pass and change lanes, what lanes do you want to operate in? Left lane. Okay, left lane. Why? Left lane is considered. I'm sorry, the far most left is I believe considered like the express lane. Nope. Anybody else? Look at the picture. What do your eyes tell you? Are you merging into the left lane? Okay. Isaiah, what do you say? I don't know. Left lane is for passing, I guess. So you guys have to use your eyes. Look at that picture. What do you see? The left lane is a lane I do not want to mess with. Express lane? 
No, the reason is they just paved it. It's it's uneven. It's an uneven surface. There's a two inch gap between the surface. So if the pickup truck changes to the left lane, his tires are so big he will cause him to bounce. He can lose control. He does not want to go to the left lane. Okay, he wants to go to the right lane or stay to the middle lane. All right, you look ahead, the space, they stopped paving it up front here. So now this lip right here, you can see it right there, you see it right there, causes a problem. The BMW has low profile tires. That means the sidewall is small. That BMW gets hooked up and rides on that, on that, on that crease, he busts one, two tires, like that. It's not a good, it's a risk and danger I don't need to encompass. It's a risk and danger I don't need to take on. The road surface is uneven. That's my biggest risk and danger in the whole picture. That's why you see traffic going from the left lane and they're riding it out. They keep going straight. And they'll, they'll merge over in front of the, 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 uh, the first he paid road. These are the details that you have to look at. It's all about your eyes. Your eyes thought we're telling you something was amiss there, but you said, well, legally, you said it was passing lane. You were going to passing lane. Look at your situation. What is your situation telling you? No, I'm not going to the left lane. I'm going to stay put or I'm going to the right. Because the risk of danger is not safe for me to go to the left. Expressways exiting. Here's a combo sign, okay? You got three signs here. 70 West, that's going to be your guide sign. It's telling you the left lane, you're going to keep on going. That's going to be 70 West. The middle lane is telling you exit only. You have a yellow and black warning sign and a guide sign combo together. So what you have here is 340 West, 15, Leesburg, Charlestown, in the middle lane. Um, over here, 270 South Washington. Right lane only. Now, this middle lane is going to veer off because the markings tell me this lane is going to stay two lanes. So it's going to have two lanes going towards 70 West. There's a combo lane, a lane that moves straight, and then go to the left. It's going to split. Now, the right lane is going to end. Something's changing. It's got the broken lines. So the markings are telling me the story about the road along with the sign information. So this whole picture is telling me how to operate, what to expect, and where to go, even before I get there. Preparation. That's why you gotta read your signs, color and shape. Okay? So your combo sign, okay? Right here. This is telling you this lane is dedicated for this purpose. This is telling you the broken line tells you it's gonna change. It's probably gonna end. Okay. Here, we are this CRV right here. Right here underneath the bridge, coming out the end of the bridge, okay? What are my risk and dangers in this picture? What are the things that I see and what are the things that I don't see? Things you don't see are um, the potential vehicles um, in your rear view. Um, Things you do see. There's a car in the middle lane that can suddenly decide to go all the way over to exit, even though he's past the dotted line, he's at a solid wood line. That don't matter. He could just decide to shift all the way over. Um, seems like the car directly in front of me has their red lights on, which means they're slowing down. So depending on how quickly they're slowing down, it could cause me to short stop um, or swerve to try to not hit them. Uh... Francisco, Francisco, hold on right there. Mm -hmm. Walk contrary to that, that car, go ahead of it. Shoot your eyes down. Because the problem is you can't see around the corner. They can't mm -hmm. see. They got their brake lights on because they're reacting to what's in front of them. So you don't want to get that chain reaction when you react to them. You want to react to what's in what's front, right. which is congestion in that corner. So I'm slowing down. Even though he's got his brake lights on, I'm preparing him to do so. Mm -hmm. I'm got my eyes down here. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Good job there, all right? And like you said, this car in the middle lane, he can just slide right over there. If he slides over, 
If this guy is speeding, now he's beside me, this can be an action point, a conflict point, okay? So these are the things that I see, okay, that I have to deal with. I can't see around the corner. I don't know how it's regulated. Is it a sign? Is it a light? Why do you have to break? Is there a traffic accident? There's too many questions, okay? Now, Wayman said, well, I got to watch my review mirror because I don't know what's coming. Well, you better because especially in the summertime, you'll have the motorcycles, and I call them the, 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 the uh, charger boys, okay? All these guys riding around here and the Challengers, the Chargers, the Infinities, and they're speeding up and down the roads, okay? They come out of nowhere. So all of a sudden, there'll be three or four of them. One goes in the right lane, bobs your lead between the red car and you. All of a sudden, another one comes and gets between. Two others will go down in front of that other car and then dip down in the lane. And all four of them will just share this lane, go right up there, slam the brakes on, bobble weed through traffic to get up to the... And they're doing 100 miles an hour doing it. That's a scenario that's not far-fetched. That happens every summer. People die every summer because of it. They get scared and they all of a sudden cause an accident. They run, they run to the wall. These are things when you're driving, you have to expect. So notice, once I've got this information in front of me, I'm spending all my time, what's behind me? This is what's gonna hurt me, not in front of me, behind me. Based on your eyesight, all right? It's all based on your eyesight. And you got the book, this right here tells you the broken line, two lanes are gonna go to the right, these three go straight forward, the markings and the signs all give me information. Okay? Now, what if you miss exit? Don't panic. You know, right? You'll be all right. Go to the next exit, turn around. It, no, first of all, that will not be me because you're not backing up on the highway. Okay? You try to back up on the highway, see what happens. No, okay. You, my foot will be on that brake so quick. Okay? You're not backing up on the highway. All right? Uh, weave lanes. They are dedicated lanes, they uh, serve the purpose of going off the highway and on the highway in the same shared space. So you have an acceleration and deceleration lane in one. That's what's called a weave lane, okay? Now the thing about the weave lane is it goes to right away. Who has the right away? Well, the white car and the blue car next to it got blinkers on, they're doing everything right, but the blue car has the right away. Because the blue car is on the highway. Now, the white car has to, should be slowing down and at a distance up here, be prepared for this because I don't want to be this conflict point. I don't want to end up side by side. So he should be slowing down, let the blue car hit in front of him, he goes behind him, off you go. Now, exceptions. Well, it's not really exception, it's situation. If I'm already, if the white car is already halfway here in front of the blue car, the blue car no longer has the right of way because of position. So position is going to be a variable that I have to deal with in this right of way situation. Because if the white car has position, the blue car has to give way to the white car. The blue car has to go beyond, behind the white car. But as long as the blue car is in front or side next to the white car, the blue car has the right of way. Okay? So that is one of those things that you have to understand. It's gonna be based. It's gonna be based on situations. Okay, what situation am I in? What is it calling me to do? Okay. Here's this picture. Where are we gonna start looking for the highway? You're that gold car. When? Do, when? At what zip point do you start looking down at the highway to manage space? Anybody? Wouldn't you have already started since you can technically see the coming traffic from that point? Exactly, as soon as possible. You, as soon as you start being able to look forward, see here you can't look forward. But Francisco, right about here, you wanna start looking down straight forward. Now, I would tell you, ideally, you can still go around here, but once you get halfway, right here, that's not the determination line, I'm starting to face downhill. I'm looking over here to the left, looking at this traffic, volume, how congested is it? How many cars are on the road? What types of cars? Is it heavy traffic with commercial traffic? Is it heavy traffic with cars or the motorcycles? Is there a funeral? Is there a, some sort of brigade? Okay. 
This is all information I need to know ahead of time before I get down here, okay? So that's, that's the thing. So you're starting to look halfway here. Once you get here, you're going to start coming around. You're going to get the car straight. Once you get the car straight, your blinker is on. You move, move to the highway. But majority of your information should be gotten before here before you get down. Everybody understand me? Now, prime example, you see the video parkway right here. You see all these the cars, vantage point. This expedition is done. There's nothing he can do to satisfy information wise. All right. If he's just getting to the bottom, which a lot of people do, they wait to get right here and then start looking to manage the space. That's incorrect. You're already too late. You're asking for an accident. This car is obviously too late. He's already getting ready to straighten up. He has to have a plan of action to know, hey, there's no space. Because now at this angle, he can't get the information here. He has to look. If he looks, he's going to be liable to, if he slays his brake on, hit this car. So these two cars, this space here, should already be predetermined. These two cars back here, we with the bushes there. They should both be looking over here, getting the information. So by the time they go and crest here, they know, hey, traffic's coming. It's light. I got to accelerate. Boom, go straight. No, I'm going to slow down the coast because there's heavy traffic coming. I'm going to get my gap's not going to be there. I have to manage so I can see first. So it's my eyes first, not operation first. So the order in which I do things is predetermined about the information that I get with my eyes ahead of time. It goes back to your eyes. Remember, you're managing time and space. All we're doing is we're managing time and space. Okay? Here it is. A lot of weave lanes happen under bridges. Here's his truck going on or off. He's slow moving. If he's coming on, it's going to take him a while to accelerate to get back over here. If he's coming off, he's trying to slow down, break down, so he, he breaks his speed down, so he's not going to flip over. So he's slowing down, and you can't see around him. If he's not using his blinker, you're at a, a loss for what's about to happen here, okay? So that's what's participating. That's what's going on here, okay? You got the car in the shoulder, in the, in the shadow. Can't even see it, okay? All right, so here, weave lanes. You got the solid white line indicates beginning exit the ramp. You've got the broken white line, so there's a combination, so the acceleration lane. You're going to pass, go left and right at will. All right. Unit seven, review. Here we go. Okay. What are the... Uh, <laughs> what is the expressway and how different has it different from other types of roads? What is the expressway? How is it different? Anybody? Um, I'm going to take an educated guess and say the expressway um, is I don't want to say like a, sh mm, I guess for lack of better terms, a straight shot where the speed limit is um, larger than would it be, for instance, let's say like in a residential area. Okay. But there's a key word they're looking for here. The key phrase. There's a key phrase they're looking for here. Who knows it? And what layer to start with? Controlled access is limited. Okay. Everything and everything is going to be defined. All right. All right. That's what's going on. It's controlled access. So what are the say, some of the other types of vehicles the driver might account on the expressway? What types of risks do they uh, pose? Okay. What type, give the name of a uh, type of vehicle. 
Um, some vehicles you could expect could be like a uh, tractor trailer. Risk and danger. Um, excuse me. 18 wheelers. <laughs> yeah, eight, so, so 18 wheelers. Um, 18 wheelers. Vehicles, and, right? All the same thing. What's the risk and danger? Um, they're very slow. Um, and even though they have all those wheels, they're moving very slow. So it, you're kind of going to have to navigate around them. But why? Um, you, you're naming symptoms. What's the problem? Because they take forever to stop. Because they're carrying like 80, they might be carrying like 80,000 pounds of. Um, right. That's all symptoms. That's all symptoms. Those are all symptoms of problems. Spots. Water blind spots. That's all symptoms. What's the problem? They take sharp turns. You can crash. Size? What's the problem with size, uh, Francisco? It changes the space you have to manage. Why, Francisco? Because if it's a larger truck, you suddenly have to look, okay, I have to manage my space differently in order to be able to navigate around them in order to realize, oh, they have no spots. Oh, they have Why, Francisco? Come on, you're almost there. Why? What? Uh, managing time and space. Oh, it changes the, the time. If it, they take up more space, they change time. The time and space, okay. Say it would be time and space. They affect time and space how? Pause. Take your glasses off, Francisco. No, oh, God. Okay. Can you see? Uh, everything's blurry. Okay. Bam. Visibility problem. Oh. There it is. <laughs> it's just that simple. It boils down to it's a visibility problem. Everything you just named were symptoms of the problem, which is visibility. I can't manage the space because I can't see. Visibility problem. Um, it's going too slow. It's too large. I can't see. Visibility problem. Uh, they can't stop. Why can't they stop? They're too big and heavy. Why, why is that a problem? They can't, I can't see around them. Visibility problem. It all goes back to your ability and their ability to see. Blind spots, no zones. Can't see. Again, visibility problem. Just that. That's why I told you it's just a simple concept. This highway, I mean, all we're doing is a very simple concept. You're managing time and space. So managing time and space, now what are you going to do? Well, first thing I do is what? Visibility. That's the first thing I attack. Why? I get information that way. Color and shape. Boom. There you go. If I see, I can get the information, color, shape. I'm good. If I can't see, problem. Oh, good. Visibility can't see. What's another vehicle? Oh, what's, what's another type of vehicle? Come on, champagne. I mean, ah, oh, my fault. Cameron, come on, Cameron. Come on, Malachi. Come on, Gary. What's another vehicle? Isaiah, what's another vehicle? Work trucks. What do you say, Alex? Work trucks. Work trucks? That'd be commercial vehicles. That'd be the visibility. Oh. Company we just had before. Emergency vehicles. Emergency vehicles. What's the risk and danger there? If you don't move over, um, you, don't you have to move over, over quick. <laughs> so you have the move over law that applies to them because the mm -hmm. danger is death to them. You're moving fast. They're sitting on the side of the road trying to deal with something. You kill them. So you have to manage the space by giving them space. So this is about managing time and space. So law enforcement, service vehicles, it applies managing time and space. I have to give, have space so I can be able to negotiate and operate safely around these vehicles. Okay? Now, what's the third one? Come on, Mr. Reddit. Come on, talk to me. Come on. They ain't got nothing. Come on. Who's next? Come on. Olympia. Motorcycles. Um, 
they're tiny. <laughs> Is that the problem? Why? Who was who? Was it again? Uh, I don't know. No, no. Somebody else was speaking besides your size. It was the young lady who spoke. Come on, confidence. Say it. Because they go fast. Nope. They're harder to see. Thank you. It's the visibility issue again. They're smaller. You can't see them. They're the opposite of the trucks. So you got motorcycles and trucks, which is the same problem, but opposite. One small, you can't see it because they're blind, and you can't see it in the fast. So big, you can't. Down the passion, you can't see them. You got the trucks that are big and slow. They're taking up all the space. You can't see around them. You can't see. So the motorcycle and the commercial vehicle are both sharing the same problem, visibility. One you can't see because it's too small. The other one's taking up too much space. Simple as that. And then the, the law enforcement, the service vehicles, is all managing time and space. That's where the law, the move over law, takes, takes, has uh, its application. Because it's about managing time and space to keep everybody safe. Okay? So um, now, what are some of the risks in the work zones? So what are some things that happen in the work zones? What are some risks and dangers of work in the work zones? There's um, like there's people there. So it's similarly to pedestrians. You really want to be careful because... Because, um, Samantha, it, what are they doing in the road? I mean, they're not in the road for, re for no reason. What are they doing? Oh, they're doing like construction. So not only are there people, there also can be like extra debris or uh, like unsafe conditions. Or like we saw in that one picture where the left lane was like two inches above all the other lanes because it had just been paved. There's a lot of like conditions that you wouldn't normally see on a road that proposes lots of extra risks that make, make you need to adjust your speed and your space and your timing and stuff. That's it. That's it. Okay. So, and so in work zones, you've got changing conditions. You've got potholes, you've got bridges, got uneven, even uneven surfaces. You got men working too close to the road. They're focused on cutting the asphalt, and digging the ditch, and you're flying by two inches from them and doing 65 miles an hour. Slow down, give them a chance. Make sure you can see what they're doing. If they fall or look, when you go through a construction zone, what happens if a water main breaks? It happens. It happens every year. It happened uh, last year. No, 2019, Washington D.C. Um, Washington Gas, they were down there working. Uh, WSC was down there, and they were working on the road, doing some, some routine maintenance. All of a sudden, boom, a pipe bust. Water, water flew out the pavement, and this lady drove right past the trucks. As everybody's running, drove right past the trucks and said, oh, I got to get to work, and drove right into the ditch. And she spent 18 hours in the ditch in her car, flooded with water. Because she saw the environment of everybody running. Instead of stopping, she kept driving and drove herself right into a pit hole, right into a sinkhole. That's what I'm talking about when I'm talking about your, your ability to trust your eyes. I see people running, I stop. I don't care where I'm going, I'm stopping. Olivia, you're late for work? Okay, they running, I'm stopping. That's it, I'm sorry, they running. I need to find out where they're running from before I start keeping on driving. Okay? Um, Florida has a sinkhole galore. People keep driving down the road and, oh, the, the road opens up. Did you see the tree falling? The tree's not falling for no reason. Stop! Okay? Um, how are work zones and speed limits enforced? Cameras. Cameras. Okay? Technology's taking over the world. You got cameras. Okay? What are some of the risks of toll plazas? Space. It's a lot of space to manage, a lot of things going on. Tunnels is the opposite problem. Limited space, no space. Okay? How do I merge into the uh, into expressway and start some of the risk? Well, I put my blinker on, I, I see information will head, I plan, have a plan before I get to the pinch point, which is the conflict point, which is the point in which we merge together. Okay? So I've already pre planned my speed, my space, my gap. Then I go ahead and put my blinker on, do my head check, and go into the lane. Once I'm in the lane, turn my blanket off. That's it. Okay? So the risk is collision. You don't communicate. You hit something. You don't, you hit something. You didn't look. Visibility, communication, operation. They work together. Okay? Um, what is an exit only lane? It's a it's a, a sign, it's a lane that has been has a warning line, a warning sign. Usually it's a combo. It's at the bottom border uh, warning sign 
of a guy sign. We create that combo sign, okay? It's a dedicated lane that tells you this lane is exiting only. The only purpose, one thing we're doing here is getting off the highway. We're not going straight. We're not pausing. We're getting off the highway. That's what we're doing. I don't keep driving. Oh, it's changing direction. Oh, yeah. It told you so. Okay? What, are, what is a weave lane? What should the driver do there? You're going in and off the highway. That's you just merging in and off the highway. Acceleration lane, deceleration lane is combined in one. Who has the right of way? Whoever's on the on the highway. The exception would be position. So there you go. That's review for unit seven. Are there any questions? All right, go take your quiz.